everyone for being here. We're really excited for, um, I think this is our second official Dawn Camp, or at least since we switched the names over to Dawn Camp. Uh, yeah. Today, we're actually going to be talking about uh, event side improvements and iterations, so we'll, we'll go over a little bit of uh, what we have changed, what we did and didn't <coughs> like, and, and hopefully what we maybe can do in the future, in the uh, next few patches, to improve upon what we've done. And then also we wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, player journey. Um, we'll go more into that later. And then lastly, some general Q&A. So if you guys have questions, whether they're things we are or aren't copying, or uh, talking about rather, then go ahead and feel free to give us those questions. So uh, first, let's do some in introductions, though. Um, I'm just going to go like straight across. Uh, so first, we have Vika, uh, boy extraordinaire. He's our lead gameplay designer. Hello. Thanks for the all time. <laughs> Next we have uh, we have Plogan, uh, creative uh, director. If yeah. I yeah. Yeah, you guys know me. I'm gonna be pretty quiet on this one, but if you guys have questions at the end of the Q and A, I'll, I'll jump in. Then we have a fluffy bunny, one singular. It is not multiple. It is our uh, wonderful producer Dana. Hello, everyone. And I'm going to skip the next week because he's generally going to be quiet this time. So, you know, don't give him questions, people, please. Uh, <laughs> next is Bright Eyes. It's going to be uh, Ian. He is our general manager for all things Catalyst Black. Everyone's just glad to be here. And lastly, we have uh, Kyle number two because I was here first. Dang it. And uh, he is our uh, gameplay, or sorry, senior creative uh, technical designer. So gameplay, lots of different stuff. Yeah. I thought there was a truce between Kyle's. <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong. You even relegate to Kyle number two. I'm sorry. Uh, alphabetically, though, Kyle over here actually does come first, so I have to see uh, see a little bit of ground. So, okay. So anyway, on to our first topic. We're going to talk about even side. So first, uh, I just want to kind of slap the last update patch or uh, last patch notes rather into the chat for anyone who doesn't remember <coughs> what the heck we did. I'll do it. Um, <laughs> so, some of the things that we mentioned, though, in a recent Discord post was we mentioned that we uh, wanted to make quite a few changes, but, uh, or for the future, <laughs> but in 15.1, Kyle, uh, Zeke, what did, what did we change? Yeah, so a lot of what happened in 15.1 was to kind of make the game a little bit more streamlined and also have the event flow more smoothly. Um, <laughs> update a few changes to kind of even out how much health players had in both player and even side. Um, and this is something that we're kind of just testing out going forward, where we're going to be trying a few different health values for both health, and you'll see what happens in the next update and so on. Um, we will be pulling back the amount of health a little bit. Oh, um, thank God. Dot 16, since the amount the amount of health you have in dot sixteen is a little bit too high, or dot sixteen dot one rather. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you guys know all the changes that are in dot fifteen one. Uh, yeah, Kyle said talked a little bit about <laughs> what we have planned. If it's this Kyle, yes. All right. Um, yeah. So in dot sixteen, based on a lot of feedback we got um, regarding even tied in dot sixteen. Uh, 16.1, uh, we will be making quite a few changes. A lot of it will bring the game or the mode much more close to where it was in .15 um, before we made the, the more like drastic updates. However, one of the things that we do want to keep consistent is we do want to make sure that the game mode has a much more consistent runtime, um, which is something we are trying to kind of target. So if you do enter a game, you, can, like, you have a pretty good estimate of how much time you expect to spend. Um, in previous updates, it could have gone anywhere from, like, say, 15 minutes to anywhere above, like, 30, and we pulled that back to be much more consistent. Um, just talking a little <laughs> about the feedback that was given to us, um, a few of the things just rolling them off the top of my head, uh, people are saying, you know, the outposts are no longer important in Final Harvest, or they the are. shards are giving too many points during they the are. course of the match. Uh, it's too hard to make a comeback during Final, Final Harvest, especially because the winning team will just keep winning because they're constantly accruing more points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, time to kill is too long with the health increases. Yes. And some of the other more subtle things are like, you know, core behemoth being a last hit contest is doesn't always feel very good where one team will 
be focusing on core behemoth, and all of a sudden, you know, one person just like drops Hellstrom while like a Berserk Mountain Ant just happens. No, um, that's a high PD. In general, <laughs> there's been some talk about the game mode being a little bit too quick, um, and we are taking a look at that too. Um, and this is this goes hand in hand with like you know there not being enough time in between the events. Correct. <laughs> um, and also that sometimes the events weren't worth it because especially because shards were so powerful. Yep. Um, <laughs> It sometimes was worth just like getting shards instead of going for the events. And of course, the double damage buff from the Mega Knox is pretty strong, especially since Too long. <laughs> they respawn sooner than the buff runs out. Um, and so just going over a little few of these, um, we do want to make sure that events matter, so we are going to be increasing the amount of points granted by them, in addition to lowering the amount of cores that are spawning on the they will still be granting um, the amount of points that we do grant now, which is like 250. However, the amount of them on the map will be reduced pretty significantly um, oh, okay. by roughly 50% or a little bit more. And a lot of this is due to there's a little bit too much time spent by like, every single player in the match on controlling those shards. And while it's pretty fun, it should not be taking up the entirety of every, both teams' attention. Um, Oh, nice. This is, a, this is not a fetch quest. Exactly. Game this mode. is not like a fetch quest. Um, this game is not about being a fetch. <laughs> this should be part. Shards so should be somewhat important, but it should not be the most dominant thing in that match. <laughs> um, one of the additional things we're doing is you might have noticed in dot fifteen or fifteen dot one that some of the bosses had like health notches on them, and we're going to be making those a little bit more important. For the overseer <laughs> and the core behemoth, especially the overseer, uh, instead of granting all the points on being killed, it will actually grant a small amount of points on each notch. So a fourth of the points will be granted <laughs> on the first notch, another fourth will be granted on the second notch, and when it's killed, it will grant the rest of the points. Um, additionally, the core behemoth, instead of becoming a last hit contest, we still grant a decent amount of points on on getting the last hit. However, we're also making it so it will it will be dropping shards throughout the battle nice. um, when you hit those notches. So that even if, if you're soloing it, it becomes a little bit more dangerous because you're not able to return those shards as easily. Uh, so <laughs> it's more it's ideally more of a team effort. So which uh, uh, so out of like all of these changes, which one do you actually feel is going to be the most impactful for players out of the gate? I think the most noticeable one will obviously be the core collection, um, just because it was so important in 15.1. Um, just the fact that it's being reduced pretty dramatically in terms of, I guess, um, how in your face it is, will probably make the biggest difference in this game mode, and it makes every single other event a little bit more important. Sweet. Did we did we miss any other major changes that are coming for in the next few patches? Um. I do want to talk a little bit about the Final Harvest a little bit, um, which is we are going to be reverting it to majority control or start turning points. Um, it will still be counting upwards. However, it's uh, I honestly, like functionally, it works the same way as it did before where it was counting down. Uh, it's just it makes more sense for the points to accrue instead of decrease. And it also just feels better, honestly. I love the decrease. Yeah, it, it, working that, that hard to get too many points to then see it slowly tick away might seem counterintuitive, especially to new players. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Um, there was a lot of, we received a lot of feedback that that particular mechanic was pretty confusing. Uh, I know you guys are all veterans in here, but there's a lot of people who are just coming on. It was a little tricky to pick up. Okay, um, let's, I want to make sure we though we allow for questions. So if you guys have questions, you haven't dropped it yet, either in chat uh, or raised your hand, please feel free to do so. Um, I'll have you be a nominee if I'm still pronouncing that right, hopefully. I just wish I'd seen all the questions, by the way, in the um, in the chat about people loving the drain mechanic. I, some of the things we've been focusing heavily on um, as we approach towards uh, the idea of launching the game is just the user experience. and. I know you guys are pretty familiar with how the game works. You guys have been rocking against it for a while, but you know we do a lot of testing with new players, and some yeah. of those things just aren't as intuitive on the surface and don't necessarily feel good if you don't know how it works, right? So 
those are some of the things and some of the reasons these changes are kind of getting folded in. I was just thinking a lot about you just now. Just wanted to add that in there. Yep. Uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions for the Eventide, I'd be happy to answer them. And we are yeah, actually working yeah. on a whole bunch of other stuff in the background, so <coughs> just because we're only making a few changes to Eventide this time around doesn't mean we won't have a lot more informed in the future updates. By the way, if you're unfamiliar with how the Discord question stuff works, you can either toss your question in the chat, uh, George will be looking there, but I'll also have an eye over on the right side. Uh, you can raise your hand and we'll, we'll bring you up to ask the question if anyone wants to kick them out. Um, yeah, so I see a couple of questions in yeah, here. So yeah, she is asking, yeah. is there more time in between events? And yes, there is. Yes. Uh, there'll be an additional 20 seconds, which is Great. not a lot, but it is no, 60 not, is good. It is significant. It's a lot better. Um, it can, yeah. It still goes up to 30,000. And this is actually going to take a lot longer than it did before, just because the amount of shards that are being dropped off on the map is significantly lower. And the shard collection was actually accounting for roughly like 44% of all points earned. So just by reducing that, um, the game will actually last quite a bit longer. Um, to Silver, is the Overseer spawning earlier now? No, it's not. It's still spawning when your team hits... When, one, when your team hits 20,000, your Overseer will spawn. And that will not spawn the other team until theirs hits 20,000 also. It's not enough time. So it's partially a comeback mechanic. Um, and just to like make it, make it so it's not just like a box rush um, when they both spawn at the same time. Cool. Okay, we um, got um, Esco. I'm gonna pronounce that really really bad. So we'll go with Alvino as your last name. Uh, so we revise you up, and we'll give you a few seconds. Yeah, if you um, if you receive an invite, it's actually kind of easy to miss. It usually hits the top part of your Discord, so just do the last one. Or if you if you you drop this code straight to one of these next. There you go. Welcome to uh, the stage. Uh, just a more like looking forward question. Uh, aside from like the change to Eventide, obviously, and like UI user experience and all that other all that other stuff, is there anything like major that we can expect from the beta release, like new game modes or like anything else that would be something to look forward to before like official launch, or is it mostly just polishing things before the official launch right now. Yeah, so this is like a big roadmap question, so uh -huh. big kind of stuff. Do um, uh, Ian or Dana, do you guys want to give us a little update on maybe just generally what uh, what yeah, things I'm we are looking at? I'm happy to speak to this. Of course, Dana, if you want to add on, feel free. Um, we definitely want to make continue to make improvements and iterations to the existing modes and features, but we do want to also make a couple more major updates ahead of launch later this year. So some things that we're looking at, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on things that you want as well, is being able to provide you all a better core PvP mode that could work with, with uh, a ranked system. So we've been listening really, really closely to the feedback that you all have given on the current PvP modes, especially arenas, and what we've heard you know, what our takeaway is we really want to provide an experience that has more more high highs, low lows, a little more competitive oriented, and also lets you stick with your teammates, lets you stick with your party. Um, so that's what we're looking at in terms of new modes when you brought up that question. And we, we hope to have that out to you all in sort of an earlier stage in the upcoming months. Uh, another area that we're investing more in is in our overall uh, metagame systems, around game systems, such as progression. Uh, we would have some pretty meaningful updates in terms of you being able to engage with some of the, the current systems better um, and also uh, more quickly be able to advance to some, some things around the fusion and other pain points that we've heard are typical to new build systems that typically don't have sort of the, the fodder to, to level them up. So those, those is another area that uh, we want to really make sure that we improve at our launch as well. So recapping largely modes, And the, the main question for the year, um, are we going to release this year? <laughs> yes, I know we get that question each, each gone camp and a lot in the chat, but we're very committed to launching this year, um, hopefully earlier in the year than later, but we definitely don't want to launch until we've addressed, uh, we see 
need a lot, the feedback, especially around the course and progress, progress, and progress and we wanna uh, make sure that we fix those, those pace points ahead of us going to a wider audience. And I really appreciate the feedback that this community has given to help, you know, inform what areas we wanna improve <laughs> when we're going to a wider audience. Yeah, on, at least on feedback, do wanna put in my assistance. We, the community team really takes everything you guys say and we make sure it gets to the right place. And we're working on even more ways to make sure that your old feedback is impa as, as impactful as possible, getting to those right people. So, you know, we really appreciate everyone coming to these, posting screenshots, and things that you don't like. So, uh, Straythorn, did you have any other questions before we try and pull someone else up? Uh, real quick, uh, is there any chance of like reframing of the, for example, I know Flight Hunters and uh, Capture the Flag. I know Capture the Flag, people were saying like it wasn't showing up as much. And also, uh, is there like a way that maybe, instead of making a flag, maybe like it could be shards, like an eventide, where it's basically the same thing for like Flight Hunter, basically? Would there be any like revisiting of those modes similar to how you did it with Slayer? I'm happy to, maybe should I just talk about the upcoming plans for the Flare Dream? Is it okay? Go for it. Okay, I'll do it. And then George may want to add on in terms of the, the modes, because I know he's been working on that. Um, but yeah, we, we are aware, so one pain point we've heard around the rotating boom modes is because of how they rotate and the frequency, depending on when you play, you don't have a chance to play some of your favorite modes like Flag Hunters or Lulia. Yep. So with the upcoming patch, 0.16, we're actually going to be changing the rotating queue to rotate daily instead of every two hours. Ah. So you can sort of plan more around Ugh. the mode that will be available. Ugh. Make sure you can access that. That's not good. Um, there's Actually, several other changes to Flare Dream. I'll talk about that later, but I just wanted to call it that specific change to the rotating oh, no, no. Um, Also, in terms of the, the modes themselves, oh, we're taking no. some inspiration from what we've been seeing people engage more with in those modes, and we would like and dislike, and actually uh, that's that into the that's not good. Uh, PvP <laughs> mode that we're working on to get out in the upcoming months as well. Oy. I don't know, George, if you want to add on anything. How about shortening the time? Uh, maybe uh, an hour between modes. How about 30 minutes between modes? We might be better now. I just want to say that for any rank map we do decide on, we do want to make sure it is a mode that has like pretty good longevity and will be pretty interesting to play long term, um, especially if we are having like a nice experience to it. <laughs> yep, I'm not really sure how much I should go into that. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that we'll we'll be getting in that here in the not too distant future. So, but I do want to highlight that's definitely going to be leveraging some of the lessons we've learned from those rotating modes. That will be our our constant warrior against the awkward. Okay, mm -hmm. that'll be our job. Is, is to yeah, there's actually a pretty good question for Ken DMG in here, um, which is, do you guys have any concerns about having too many K modes left in the player player base for each game mode? And I do believe uh, Ian has a pretty good answer for that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give an update on the rest of the 0 0.16. We call it the, the player journey going through unlocking the different modes. So I talked about the changes to the rotating queue, um, which is directly um, related to the previous question. But one thing that, that we firmly believe is that being able to play the game with other real humans versus bots is more enjoyable. And I, I think you'll agree, you know, looking at the comments that we've seen in the community. So um, one way to help with that is by reducing the total number of modes. That helps with the available matchmaking tool or sometimes called liquidity. And so what we're gonna do for 0 0.16 is we're gonna keep the modes that you all play the most, the most popular modes. So um, Slayer is gonna stay persistent, Eventide sure. is gonna stay persistent. We're sure. actually gonna bring up to make it easier and more quick to unlock Eventide because it's one of the most popular modes currently. But we're gonna shift uh, arenas into, and also Coliseum uh, trials is on, into the rotating game mode queue. And a large reason for doing that is that by having less persistent queues, it will drive more real players into those PvP modes I mentioned, yes. player and event type. And so that will help you get those matches to have more real humans we think will be more enjoyable. Um, and so that sort of updates the player journey and that, that mode um, flow will be coming out in the next patch. Hopefully we're, oh sorry, go ahead. Right now, we are actually playing with some templates for some of the skins that we've derived in real 
about is the mass of that club because it's really great in the game. They have people to play on, get into match, and you know, play there, fight each other. Unfortunately, at the moment, they are not driving uh, um, enough volume in the North American servers. So if you are playing on those servers, you may not see that kind of like, uh, um, you know, this pulse draining in and kind of like, you know, dip you. Uh, but that will also change in the upcoming uh, releases as they are uh, getting data to buy and acquire a lot more units in the, in the other servers that are involved. But you should already see like an uptick of like new folks coming in to the Canadian servers to help with that uh, liquidity issue. But the long-term vision of having strong core nodes that can play more people who have, you know, a lot of like dreams to come back and play and push their tracks, that's still something that we want to do. But in the down the road, in the future, rather we have uh, tons of people playing the game. I, I will think that that will value to open up like more and more games of that and, and uh, um, give people a chance to kind of like jump back and forth between like different games. It's like, there's going to be like a, some trade off that we need to take care of uh, at, at, at an early stage of the game. Um, yeah. All right. Now, um, Ashrod, welcome to the stage. Uh, hey. What kind of questions well, do you have for us? Just have like two. Um, one is for I know you guys are talking about player journey. I, I get that there's a lot of new people coming in, but like the quests are kind of weird for me. Because I'm so far ahead in the quest, there's certain things that I can't do. Like, there's a quest to dust something up. I'm a Forge Master. Everything is level 20. I can't dust anything. So, I'm stuck in the quest queue. I can't move past that quest. I know there's like a whole bunch of other quests that are supposed to be there, but there's no way to skip it. And there's no way for me to get the Lumia Isia mask I would need so I could actually continue doing that. Like... Right now, I'm pretty much the only content creator that I see who's consistently still doing stuff. Um, I'm actually going back looking at all of the older patches and just reviewing them and seeing like what was the differences between um, 0 0.2 versus what we have now. So I was just wondering if there was a way that there could be some logic added into the quest to make sure that if somebody can't complete a quest, they're not getting a quest that they can't complete. Or yes. if there's a way to skip that quest. So that would be one of the things I think would be kind of cool to have. Yeah, the, the quest in general, what you're talking about, uh, and sort of onboarding, the way onboarding will work for the game as new players come in with, uh, with our global launch is something that's definitely being tackled like at a, a broader level. But you're also bringing up a more important usability issue with the quest system, which is, is there a way we could just allow you to dismiss a quest and get a new a new one from the pool of quests, particularly if it's one of these um, random pools of quests that we have, right? Yeah. I think that's really fair feedback and something um, we can definitely toss to our, um, our UX team and uh, get that talked about. I think that's a really good suggestion for sure. And yeah, you, you are in a little bit of a <laughs> unique cool. category as far as like... Uh, there are iterations we've been doing on the player journey and we'll continue to. And I know Dana probably has a lot to offer on this actually, so I'll probably turn the mic over to her in a bit here um, to talk broader about the player journey. But um, these are things we're, from a, from a feedback standpoint, I think it's good for us to hear. So we're talking about these kinds of things. Is there anything else, Isarod? Yeah, before? the last one was the way teams work right now. Um, the way the team set is set up, like right now, I use it to my advantage because of the way you earn XP in the game. If I want to basically play an even tide from the beginning, or if I want to play a Slayer match from the beginning, or any mode, start a brand new fresh game, I put myself in a one-person team. The way that works is the game will always spawn a brand new game, no matter what mode I choose. And then part two of that is no one else in the queue can see me, and I can't see anybody else. So... It guarantees that I always get brand new games, but at the same time, only way people join my game is at random. They're not able to drop in, they're not able to see me, I'm not able to see them. And if we basically make a team of three, and another friends make a team of three, we can't join the same game. We'll literally spawn two different games, and then other random people can join our games. What I'm wondering is if something's gonna be done with the team system to actually get them so teams can actually see other teams. So that's something we are looking into, uh, not for 0 0.16, right. our next release, um, but something we do hope to solve in the future. Okay. That's pretty much it. But yeah, it, it works exactly the way you're describing, and uh, 
we know we have a little more work to do there. Okay. That, that, that was it for me. <laughs> oh. You can drop me off. I'm, I'm pretty much done. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, ISO. Okay. Trying to get us back on track a little bit. Um, so, is there anything else, at least from 0 0.16, that anyone currently up on stage was really excited about and wanted to uh, share? We're working on updating the VO in, in Charles Don. That's Yay. coming in. It's just coming in hot, but it's coming in. The Overseer has fancy new effects. We're adding a new boss to the Coliseum in 0 which is the Overseer. Hey, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, so this is a, it's actually a new version of the Overseer, um, which will <laughs> share some abilities from Eventide, but they are a bit more souped up. And uh, it's also bringing in some brand new uh, laser and beam moves that uh, are not on Eventide. So it's probably going to be quite a bit more challenging than the other two bosses, but <laughs> should be fun to see. Uh, you know, how everyone reacts to that and the different loadouts you'll have to use to take it down. <laughs> nice. Sorry, it took a minute to uh, unmute. Yeah. So where, um, one thing that was, uh, I was actually going to kind of ask about that a little bit earlier. What, um, what are sort of our thoughts about kind of Coliseum? Like, how do we feel that it's been, uh, been going? Like, what has been some of the kind of player feedback? Um, and kind of where, where do we see Coliseum? progressing in the future. Uh, so Coliseum is working out really well for, you know, getting people into the game, getting their feet wet with like just learning the basic mechanics of the game. Um, it's a really, you know, low barrier of entry. There's not a lot of pressure on, on you to perform well. So it's, it's serving its purpose really well in that regard. Um, and then going forward, you know, like we're hoping to continue to, tweak it and update it as we as we go forward and the overseer and some of these VO updates coming in are kind of like the first step in that direction. Nice. Now next I wanted to actually so those voiceovers. So um, are we allowed to say who who the voiceover is coming in for Loken? Oh yeah, it's it's top the the announcer for the Coliseum. So yeah, we are, we've done one session with the actor. We will be doing a second and trying to fold all that in for code lock and then that will yeah hopefully add a breathe a lot more life actually there's a lot more diversity going into uh, the voice cues around coliseum it's it's we have quite a few different rounds or makeups of rounds of the coliseum um and so we've, we've even done things on the art side or are working on things on the art side to differentiate some of the grenu mobs and their abilities uh, just adding different textures and tones so um even though they are technically different, sometimes they look and seem and feel the same. But uh, what will happen with some of these VO cues is we've uh, we've just put a little bit more diversity into them so that they're specific to the round that actually spawns. So uh, the announcer will actually say different things depending on the round composition that you're experiencing. And um, obviously with the bosses, he'll have unique VO and unique things to say and that kind of thing. But um, but yeah, it's it's just some some cool creative flavor for sure. So this is this is a very personal question. Do um do we ever get to face Toph in the Coliseum? Imagine. Or you know, like that would be really <laughs> fun. That'd be a really fun long term goal. You know, he's an interesting uh, he was an interesting character to write for because um <laughs> you know, he's basically uh like a highly evolved Grenu. So, you know, the Gru and Grenu and the Welkins, they sort of biophosphoresce with catalytes, so they're they're hyper intelligent, a lot of them. And many of them are in different states of that evolution, but Toph is like highly evolved and in fact um you know when the expeditions made their way into the welkins he um he was super enamored with kyrian culture he picked up the kyrian tongue the language um he loves etiquette and proper dress and formalities and hierarchies like he's super into all that but he's also still really wild right like he has um pretty intense instincts and he loves the sort of circus of the coliseum and the show and all that kind of stuff and so the spectacle he's a, of it all yeah he's a funny mix of uh proper and vicious at the same time but yeah he, he could make for a fun boss at some point for sure nice so i'm actually going to switch gears slightly um because this was a question that i meant to kind of ask a little bit er earlier so um i forget who but we were talking a little bit about 
the maybe some upcoming game modes and kind of stuff like that. Um, can we, uh, whether it's George or Kyle, um, you know, what are some of the things that we want to bring to Catalyst Black in a new game mode that we don't already have in our uh, existing kind of catalog of modes? Yeah, so talking a little about game <laughs> modes, um, I brought this up a little bit earlier, but we really want to make sure there's a mode that has very like much a core <laughs> ranked PvP mode. Um, which we, we do have Slayer, we do have Eventide. However, Eventide is much more of the long form game mode, um, and Slayer is a little bit too short to really allow you to have like team strategy and whatnot, um, other than just kind of like killing each other. And one of the things that we're looking for in a core ranked mode is something that has a little bit more strategic depth where it really feels like your decisions um, will really lead you to victory or defeat. Where um where are some of your inspirations kind of coming from when you're when designing some of these modes? Yeah, so some of these modes um, are actually a couple places. So we do have some inspiration coming from Halo and a lot of first person shooters, uh, but there's also games such as like Killer Queen. Um, but there's also a lot of inspiration that comes directly from Catalyst Black, where just seeing how the matches have played out and how our game modes have played out in the past, um, we take a lot of learnings from those and kind of <laughs> drive them into our new game modes. Nice. Always love hearing stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Did... Was it, I think we covered everything generally that we wanted to about the player journey. Was there any... Uh, Anything biting or like on the tip of anyone's tongue for the player journey that we wanted to kind of cover again? No, so I think the the key beats there were really um, going back to Slayer as our very first mode, um, and the main reason for that is because we feel Slayer is a bit more representative of the full Catalyst Black experience uh, rather than Colosseum. Um, exposing those new players to Eventide a bit earlier than we have in the past, simply because it's a super cool game mode. Um, it's really popular uh, amongst players, and we think getting players to it sooner rather than later is probably going to be a good thing for us. Um, and then consolidating uh, the rest of our modes into the rotating queue. And that so will just improve uh, you know, everyone getting to play with real people instead of bots. So re awesome. remind us for the people who have already passed being able to play Eventide like a year ago, where um where was the unlock to play Eventide versus where is it uh like how early are we wanting it to be in the future? Gotcha. Um where is it right now? Oh my gosh, we've moved it so many times. I think it's at <laughs> I think it's at six right now. Yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah. Um, so we're moving it to Ascension level four. Um, so it's a little bit earlier. Um, players should unlock it uh, after, you know, not too many games of Slayer um, and have it be kind of the next experience that they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because definitely, I would definitely say, I know everyone I've talked to, after you get to play Slayer for a little bit, getting into that deeper mode, even if you have no idea what's going on, that kind of deeper strategic mode is really what's going to, going to uh, kind of keep them coming back to play kind of black even more. Yeah, and even fight is definitely a nice mode to kind of hang around in. There's a lot to do. You can uh, contribute points in so many different ways. I did want to also make sure um, it was, if there was anyone who wanted to come <laughs> up on stage, uh, use that little hand raising option and come ask a question and if you uh, if you are on the bus or somewhere you can't talk or anything please still feel free to drop those questions in chat but we have generally covered pretty much all of our topics so in the interest of not dragging things out or beating a dead horse um we'll wait a little bit for anyone who might have questions or want to come up but then we'll kind of wrap this thing up Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, from Mata, any cosmetics or just what's kind of our take on cosmetics for Catalyst Black? Not right now. <laughs> I would love to see that's that. That's a very big question to answer, to be honest. 
Yeah, I, I think um, I think we all think cosmetics are a cool thing. It's just not what we're focused on at the moment. Yes, and if it hasn't been obvious from a lot of the things <laughs> that we've said here or in the past, you know, launch making the game as immediately fun as possible to where pe people download, play for even the first five minutes and automatically know that they want to continue to play for several months or years going forward. That's, you know, that's really kind of the goal. And uh, Okay, so now I invited <laughs> Chia. Uh, Chia, welcome to the stage. And uh, what, uh, what kind of questions you got for us? Hey, everybody. Um, I actually wanted to talk about um, auto aim, manual aim, oh, um, good, gun good blazing, stuff. and uh, kind of how that's all kind of worked out. Um, so my general take on it was um, before guns blazing, auto aim was very strong, um, a little too strong. Um, but what it allowed you to do was um, much more easily weave your weapons together because you would basically be on target, um, not having to worry about it. With guns blazing, it introduced a lot more um, potential skill, but it kind of slowed down the the pace of the Bullets of scattered. the game, and you have to like you know manually drag um, you know your your reticle out in order to, to uh, hit your shots. And I like that um, as far as uh, expression of skill, but um, I think it is like detrimental to um, being able to weave your your guns together in an effective way. Um, and so my suggestion was to um, add a, a button where you could like um, have manual aim kind of always be on <laughs> and you can sh turn that on and off um, and I just kind of wanted to hear your feedback or thoughts on um, how you feel about uh, manual aim um, guns blazing and all of that Bullet scatter. yeah so I can take a shot at this um, so for your suggestion that actually sounds really interesting uh, just to try to you know, have it always be on that we don't have to worry about the initial awkwardness of like, you know, touching the screen and then having to drag in the right direction. Um, as far as the guns blazing stuff as a whole goes, so we're still, that was like the first pass at adding a bit more skill cap to weapons. Um, we're still continuing to tweak and look at ways we can improve on it. So I definitely wouldn't say that like the the version that went out with that is not the final version <laughs> and in the coming uh, patches not for 0 0.16 which is the next one but um, post that there are some changes in the in the works that are going to address some of that a little bit more oh, excellent Do you have any other uh, other questions? Bullet scatter. Nope. Uh, oh, I just did want to mention for all the, uh, I guess, uh, Vain Glory fans. I named my son Arden, so he's a support oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, support baby in me. Yeah. Okay, I'll, we, I'm going to move you back to the audience. Um, but we did have another good question. I got to go back and find it in chat. Um, so. Uh, someone, uh, Neo Guri had kind of pointed out there ha hasn't necessarily been a ton of new gear lately. Are we, do we plan to ever have new gear? Is that a thing? Or, or oh, this after is it? release, I guess. <laughs> I guess I can take that one. Um, so yes, there will eventually be new gear. Um, and as this is kind of the main thread of a lot of this uh, conversation that we're having, it's just not our focus at the moment. Oh, yeah. um, you know, right now we're spending a lot of our time just really shoring things up for launch. Um, we already have a lot of gear in the game, um, plenty for, uh, you know, the first cohort of players to come in at launch um, and spend some time <laughs> uh, leveling those things up. Uh, us, so yeah. <laughs> we're probably not going to see much new gear um, for a while. Um, that's probably more in a, a post-launch world. Double ouch with cheese. Yeah. So there. So yes. Basically, probably not right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have new gear. Yeah, I will say we we see gear as a big part of why people want to play this game. Like, don't don't think we don't realize that. Like, we think as part of the live service for this game, and like. Regular gear updates, primals, all that stuff. We we know that's where the heart is coming back and finding new ways to play and you know build new loadouts. Like 
don't think we've shifted from that in any ways. I know you guys have been on a long dry spell as far as gear goes, so it's uh, it's not a thing you should expect will be the case when this, the game's in. Like, oh, we know that part. <laughs> yeah, I think as, uh, as Ian mentioned earlier, um, you know, we're not super prepared to talk about it today, but we are working on some updates to uh, how our meta systems work. Um, and so we want to make sure that that's in a really good place uh, before we start introducing our gear. Um, so I, at that point, you'll you'll see a few changes and we can talk about that in more detail at our next on camp. Yeah, and to what uh, Broken Vala had just said, yeah, take time to fix the things that need fixing and then new things can be introduced later in the game. That is that is a good way to put it, too. Um, so we'll get, we'll get Asha Ron back up here. Um, and then I think we're, we'll kind of call it after that. That way we hit around the 45-minute mark and don't make this piece of content a bit too uh, unwieldy for anyone else who needs to, uh, who wants to actually listen to this recording. Um, I, so I sent the invite. Yeah, just waiting for it. But, by the way, we will continue to do these kinds of dawn camps oh, no. <laughs> to continue to have this very uh, personal communication, this very personal and uh, interactive way of engaging with everybody to where um, this should be a fairly re recurring event that we do. So it should be something that we want you guys to expect. Um, depending on how the patches uh, kind of flow out between every month and so, it's not going to be perfectly realistic that we do one every single patch, but we'd like to kind of do one every month, month and a half or so, so that you guys get to uh, hear our voices and uh, uh, come chat with us. So, okay, I so uh, welcome back to the stage. What, uh, what new fresh questions do you have for us? Okay, I just want to say just that you guys doing more engagement, I really appreciate that. Um, and there are some like lingering stuff like stasis. There's been an issue with this for three updates now that you activate stasis and you can't deactivate it. It's fixed. Yeah, that's what, these are the things I want to hear. Okay, and <laughs> there was this weird thing um, in, where we play Azure Plateau and you kill the Mega Knot, you get no buff. I don't understand why that happens, but it only happens in the rotating Q modes, but it doesn't happen like when we used to have um, go, as a plateau in the go in Slayer, it used to work 100%, but it never worked in the rotating queue. Don't get it, but that's what I've noticed. Um, and one last one, oh, what was it again? I thought it was one thing I couldn't, I, I can't remember. But it's just those little niggling things. I was wondering if you guys had gotten a chance to, to fix some of those bugs that's just been persistent, like for multiple stuff. Controllers. You, when you use the drop yeah. button on the controller, it works perfectly in the rotating queue. It does not work in even time at all. Oh, really? It, you, you'll you start pressing it, and you just see drop, 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 but nothing ever drops. That was the last one. But that that's pretty much all I wanted to actually no, ask. That's a good thing. That, that should yeah. be working. We should, let's just take a look at that. Thank you, Aksa. We're going to... Uh... We'll try one last person real quick for some questions um, in case they want to add something new. Um, Keith, oh dear, the upper case letter. Just call letters. me Smile. Just call me Ma. Ma, <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Okay, then what can we do for you? All right, so look, what's going on, community? First of all, I would like to say the progress has been pretty good. I've been attending these meetings now for a while now. My only question is, is I know we're supposed to be doing cross-platform. When is that? Do we have like an ETA on when that's going to come by? Are we cross-platform? Yeah, so yes. for, uh, I can jump in on that. Like, in terms of cross-platform ambitions, our focus right now is really to nail the experience of our mobile. initial launch platform, which will, will obviously be mobile. Um, okay. And also those those features that we talked about, you know, the new modes, some of the progression updates, some of the core combat improvements. Um, so no TBD on cross platform or no timeline on cross platform until we really feel like we've we've nailed the the mobile the like, just... Okay, okay. All right, cool. That was my only question. <laughs> thank you, Cohen. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks. Take it easy, guys. See you, brother. All right. We'll go ahead and wrap this thing up here. Um, thank you guys to everyone who stuck around from the beginning. Thank you everyone who's going to be listening to this uh, during a recording later. We really appreciate you guys and that you're a part of this community. Um, I want to thank everyone uh, from Super Evil who came here. Uh,
within a very short time frame and I because I said hey we're gonna do a thing and you were like hey I can do a thing so <laughs> appreciate you guys and uh, we'll see you guys out in the game house black pretty soon and uh, hear from us pretty soon on more stuff on social and in discord so uh, yeah play the perfect timing yes yeah, the music. nice <laughs> yeah thanks for coming guys we appreciate you all thank you all thank you all appreciate it. thank you cheers see ya